We now come to the Leader of the Opposition, Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join the Prime Minister in wishing Her Majesty a happy birthday? Why did the Prime Minister's Press Secretary, Allegra Stratton, have to resign from her job? Minister. Uh, I I bitterly regret Allegra's uh, resignation. I think it was very sad. And I think she did an outstanding job. Uh, but, uh, I, I, I do, I, I do. Uh, particularly, particularly uh, since uh, she was the, the one who coined the uh, expression coal, cars, cash and trees, uh, which enabled the UK uh, to deliver a fantastic COP26 uh, summit last year. Allegra Strachan laughed at breaking the rules. She resigned. The Prime Minister then claimed he was furious at her behaviour and accepted her resignation. Professor Neil Ferguson broke the rules. He also resigned. The Prime Minister said that was the right thing to do. The former Health Secretary broke the rules. He too resigned. The Prime Minister tried to claim he sacked him. Why does the Prime Minister think everybody else's actions have consequences Absolutely. Except his own. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, I thank the right honourable gentleman. I, I feel he's in some kind of Doctor Who time warp. We had this, uh, we had this conversation yesterday, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I've, ex- I've, ex- I've explained uh, why I bitterly regret. Uh, receiving an FPN. I, I, I apologise uh, to the House. Uh, but he asks about the actions for which I take responsibility. And I'll, I'll tell him we're going to get on uh, with delivering for the British people, uh, making, sure, uh, making sure that we power out of the, the problems that Covid has left us, and more people in work than there were before the pandemic, Mr Speaker, fixing our energy problems and leading the world in standing up to the aggression of Vladimir Putin. Those are all subjects about which I think he could uh, reasonably ask questions now. These are strange answers from a man who yesterday claimed to be making a humble apology. (laughs) Does the Prime Minister actually accept that he broke the law? Uh, yes, Mr Speaker, I've been absolutely clear that I, I humbly accept what the, uh, what the police have, uh, have said. I've paid the, the fixed penalty notice. And, Mr Speaker, what I think the country and what I think the whole House uh, would really rather do is get on with the things for which we were elected, deliver on our promises to the British people. And it's, uh, you could not have clearer evidence of the intellectual bankruptcy yeah. of Labour. Plans. They have no plans for energy. They have no oh, plans no. for social care, and they have no they have oh, no plans to speak to fix the economy. Prime Minister, sit down. I want to hear what you've got to say, but I can't hear when you're talking that way. I'm here in the chair. Please, if you can help me. No, I think we'll have had enough. Oh. The state of it. The party of Peel and Churchill reduced to shouting and screaming in defence of this lawbreaker. No, then, that's the last time that Peroni that you just asked about, you might have to go and take it. I don't hear any more, or else you will be drinking. Keir Starmer. So, Mr Speaker, yesterday's apology lasted for as long as the Prime Minister thought necessary to be clipped for the news. But once, once the cameras were off, once the cameras were off, the Prime Minister went to see his backbenchers, and he was back to blaming everyone else. He even said that the Archbishop of Canterbury had not been critical enough of Putin. In fact, the Archbishop called Putin's war an act of great evil, and the Church of England has led the way in providing refuge to those fleeing. Would the Prime Minister like to take this opportunity to apologise for slandering the Archbishop and the Church of England? Mr Speaker, I, I, I think the, 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 the right honourable gentleman, uh, I, I, was, I was slightly taken aback to be uh, for the gov- sorry, Mr. Speaker, I was slightly taken aback for the government to be criticised over the uh, policy that we have uh, devised to uh, end, the, end the, the deaths at sea in the Channel as a result of cruel, 
criminal gangs. I, I was surprised uh, to be a, to, that we were attacked for that. And actually, Mr. Speaker, it turns out that that policy. Do you know who proposed that policy? Uh, first of all, in, in 2004, it was David Blunkett, uh, Mr. Speaker, who said it was a 21st. Yes, it was, and she'll remember a 21st century solution to the problems of illegal asylum seeking and immigration. Uh, he should stick with. He's a Corbyn Easter. He's a Corbyn Easter in a smart Islington suit. That's the truth. I think you'll find Mr Corbyn doesn't have the whip. But I think that's a no, then. Pathetic. He, he never takes responsibility for his words or actions. They were all there. The Prime Minister also accused the BBC of not being critical enough of Putin. Would the Prime Minister, would the Prime Minister have the guts to say that to the face of Clive Myrie, Lise Doucette and Steve Rosenberg? who have all risked their lives day in, day out, on the front line in Russia and Ukraine, uncovering Putin's barbarism. Uh, 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 if, the, if the right honourable gentleman wants to uh, join the Conservative Party and come and listen to uh, what, uh, the meetings of the uh, Conservative Party, he's welcome to do it. Uh, but though I, I, though, as I say, I think he's a Corbyn Easter in a Islington suit. But I said nothing of the kind, uh, and I have the highest admiration uh, as, a, as a journalist and a former journalist for what journalists do. Uh, I think they do an outstanding. They do an outstanding. I mean, I think he should withdraw what he just said. It has absolutely, absolutely, absolutely no basis or foundation in truth. Keir Starmer. That's how he operates: a merely mouthed apology when the cameras roll a vicious attack on those who tell the truth as soon as the cameras are off. Slander decent people in a private room. Let the slander spread without the backbone to repeat it in public. How can the Prime Minister claim to be a patriot when he deliberately attacks and degrades the institutions of our great country? I, I, Mr. Speaker, sorry, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Not, not premise. Just, just a second. I want to hear the Prime Minister's answers. I expect it both ways. Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Speaker, it is a, 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 an indication of the depths to which he is willing to sink. That he accuses me. That, yeah, he accuses me. He accuses me of producing journalists. What he says, what he says, is completely without any foundation, whatever. I did not attack the BBC last night for their coverage of Ukraine. He must be out of his tiny mind, Mr. Speaker. He must be out of his tiny mind. I said, I said no such thing, and there are people behind who will testify to that. He is completely wrong, Mr. Speaker. That, that is, that is the limit. That is the limit of his uh, willingness to ask sensible questions today. Uh, we are getting on, this government is getting on with the serious problems that require attention, fixing our energy uh, supply issues. And, make it, uh, and by the way, undoing the damage of the Labour government that didn't invest in nuclear power for 13 years. Uh, we're with a nuclear power station every year. Standing up to Putin, Mr. Speaker, uh, when uh, he would have elected a Putin apologist. That's what he wanted to do, and he campaigned uh, to do that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and fixing our economy with record numbers of people now in work, productivity back above what it was, more than half a million people back on the payroll than there were before the pandemic began, Mr. Speaker. That is as a result of the decisions, the tough calls this government has made. Uh, we get on with the job while they flip flop around like beached flounders on the beach, Mr. Speaker.